guys, welcome back. It's Melody and today we're going to be talking about my favorite subject of all time. And as it goes, if I'm very excited about something, my eyes will bug out and also <laughs> I will talk too fast. So we're going to try to keep it steady here. We're going to be talking about psychology. There are a lot of psychology tests, but this one is the instinctual stacking or it is the energy that people give off and determining energy. And I think this is the most important one to start off with because one, it's extremely simple. So the Myers-Briggs has 16 combinations. That isn't that simple. This one only has six and not only that, but this one is crucial because it has to do with friendships and lovers more than all the other types. Even if you're a hermit in some ways and you have experienced these six energy types. So you kind of know instinctively about them, but this is putting the data behind the feeling. We are going to cover the three types of instincts, which is how we give off our energy, the way that these are ordered. The very first instinct is the social instinct. And if you are a social first type of person, then the topics that are listed on the screen are the topics that you are probably going to gravitate toward in discussion. Again, these are just instincts. So instincts can be overridden easily, but when we're in our natural state, this is how we gravitate toward. So people that are social first, their primary concern is building value, accomplishment, and security in the world. For me, I can recognize a social first person because they are very attuned to trends. They are likely to be wearing band t-shirts or their favorite television t-shirt. They are likely to be involved in a church or something like that. They just want to be social. So sports, church, band, politics, all that kind of stuff is very social. So social types of people, when they are unhealthy, they will have poor social skills. They will reject others or start to loathe or despise society. The fact that people have to fit in and they will be especially stubborn in giving people what they want as in kind of a defiance against their social instinct. So that is the first, that is the social instinct. The second instinct is the one that I think that most of us will have in our stacking. So that since there are three instincts, all of us have two that we gravitate towards and the last one is our blind spot. So there's going to be two that we focus on primarily. And if you have self-preserving in your stacking, which is the oldest instinct known to man, it's the instinct of survival. If you are a self-preserver, you will probably talk about the topics that I've listed on the screen. Self-preserving people are concerned with safety, comfort, and environment. And they, when they are unhealthy, they will overstock, overbuy, overpurge, overeat, overindulge, undersleep, or oversleep. Those are the cues that they are an unhealthy self-preserver. So a lot of people can go overboard with self-preserving and trying to be autonomous and then they will start collecting a lot of things or minimalists will start purging to an extreme. That's a sign that their self-preserving is unbalanced. I can tell people that are SP first because they have an old-fashioned energy to them. They have a calm to them. They almost are too calm. <laughs> they are very diffused type of personalities because again, it is the oldest instinct known to man. The last energy is sexual energy. And social does not have to do with socializing. It has to do with finding your value in the world. So you want to be attached to groups for value. That's when you feel your best. And sexual does not have to do with sex drive. But sexual energy has to do with intensity. And people with an SX fix first are very intense types of people and they want immersion and intensity of experience. If you are an SX first type of person, you will gravitate towards the topics I've listed on the screen. The easiest way to tell an SX type of person is there is a certain level of intensity to them. People that have it secondary, they will be more diffused with their intensity, but they will still be intense. And people without the SX instinct will be very relaxed. Bill Clinton and Ronald Reagan are perfect examples of somebody with SX straight in the middle. And those people are generally speaking the most likable people because they're not too intense and they are not, not intense at all. When the person with SX is not healthy, you will see scattered attention lack of focus, possible promiscuity, avoiding intense experiences, which was definitely me. In my early 20s, I would avoid all intense experiences. When you're not healthy, just like social people that are not healthy, they will repel people away when they're not healthy. 
when I'm not healthy, I will avoid intense experiences altogether. Now, the very first instinct that you have is where you naturally cleave to, you naturally want and long for. The second instinct is often neglected in favor for the first instinct, but you shouldn't neglect it because that's when you're unhealthy. And the last instinct, if you don't build it up at all, then you often look down on people with that last instinct. So a lot of people without the social instinct like me, they will say, oh, people, they just follow trends or they're so involved in politics they can't understand other people's point of view and people without the sexual instinct for instance they'll say they're so inappropriate they are so fixated on relationships or friendships they can't understand why they need intensity of experience and adventure for instance people with a self-preserving instinct last they'll look at people with a self-preserving instinct first as fussy whatever is your blind spot you have to develop it it will never be your first instinct but that way you can understand where other people are coming from this really helps to determine energy once you begin typing your friends and relatives you will begin to easily identify those types of energies. My energy is an upward idealistic type of energy geared towards people. So overly idealistic people have their cons just like overly realistic people have their cons. So you can't just say everybody should be like this or everybody should have this instinct because that's just bias. There's three three stacks that are positive, three that are realistic. The positive stack would be SXSP like me. Other SXSP people that you might know of is Selena Gomez and Lana Del Rey. People that I gravitate towards the most are also in my same upward idealistic energy and that's social and sexual people. And people of that stacking type, I have the most to learn from. I put more resources in the down bar so you can see which stacking you have the most to benefit from. But because they have SO in their stacking first, I have a lot to benefit from them because they get me out of myself, which I need help with and SX is second, so they still concern themselves with it to some degree, but they're also social, so they help me to develop my blind spot. And then the last energy that's optimistic is SPSO, which is self-preserving social. My mom is an SPSO, and they are very bright and smiley, but they are not intense. There is not an intensity to them and SX energy is intense. Now, when you're dealing with an extrovert and their secondary mode is sexual, their intensity might even be more than mine because I'm an introvert. So introversion always diffuses some of this. Of the realistic stackings, the ones that I gravitate towards the most is SPSX. I have a lot of SPSX friends that's self-preserving, sexual, and those people are the pillars of community. They're the hard workers, responsible, usually just want to be left alone. A lot of husbands are like that in the South. They're the SPSX energy, and but they are still realistic. So if you are of the optimistic energy like me, you have big dreams and you talk to them, they will say, come on now, you got to be realistic. That is just natural for them to feel like that. If I'm going to be looking for a serious conversation, uh, focused attention, and talk about a lot more deeper issues, I generally speaking go to the SPSX because they want, they crave that deepness and intensity and realistic groundedness. The SOSP energy is also a realistic energy and it's a very diffused and calm and overly formal type of energy. So a lot of people that I've noticed that are scientists or in IT, they can be very, you can totally tell there's some Essex instinct there. They're so calm and almost like a bump on the log, but when they talk, they can be really formal the way that they speak. And that is definitely SOSP energy. SXSO is a divisive energy, a very divisive energy because they want to be catalysts of change. And so those are the types on Facebook that are gonna be activists like posting very inflammatory types of things, whether it's about feminism or politics or Donald Trump, for instance, is SXSO, unlike Bill Clinton or Ronald Reagan, who is SOSX, which is a positive energy. It is a realistic and it's a pessimistic energy and it's divisive and they can help it. 
you might say, well, they should try harder because it's clearly not good for everybody. But that is their instinct. Their instinct is to be callous for change. Whenever you're answering these questions, the best way to answer them is to not overthink them, to go from question to question to question. You should be going off of your gut feeling of who you are and not spending a lot of time. My dad is SPSX energy. When I give him these tests, he will say, well, what does that mean? And he'll just spend five minutes per question. It'll take forever to get through the end. So when you're taking these tests and you're giving them out, have people answer them as quickly as possible. Read up on it and make sure it's actually you. And most importantly, remember, these tests are to help you understand yourselves and to help you understand others, how you can most learn and grow. It's not to divide yourself against other people and it's not for self-loathing. <laughs> the ideal is to hang out with people with enough differences and enough commonality so there's not so much struggle that you're basically swimming upstream like a salmon. I have friends of all six of these types so you can get along with everybody. Some of them you're going to gravitate towards naturally and instead of trying to figure out why, now you know. So I hope you liked this video. If you did, give it an upvote and I will see you next week in the next Minimalist and Organization video. Don't forget to subscribe.